Podtacular, episode 422. It's Elementary, from May 8th, 2014. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I'm your host, Dust Storm. And I'm your other host, Bryn Gamer. And tonight we were planning to do our first of our Halo 5 shows, but no one decided to show up. So we're going to kind of postpone that for another week, hopefully, and get people on. Um, I'm going to try to scour the internet for more people. That way we might actually have people show up this time. And hopefully we can have a good discussion going on as well. Um, That may affect when we record. That may push a Friday podcast out instead of a Thursday podcast recording. But uh, hopefully we can get some people on to actually talk about it. Um, Luckily for us this week, though, we do have some pretty important news to talk about. So just diving right into things, let's go ahead, jump into some not exactly Halo-ish news, but it is somewhat related. Uh... Waypoint put out a tweet earlier this week, actually yesterday as of this recording on Wednesday, um, saying yes, this is happening uh, with a hashtag Minecraft XBLA and with a Halo screenshot. So this is kind of hinting at the fact that there's going to be a Halo mashup pack for Minecraft. So this is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, they already uh, have the the Halo skins for Steve in there for the Xbox Minecraft, and they've had two other mashup packs already they've had mass effect and they have skyrim and now we have halo so how much do these usually cost uh these i want to say are five bucks a piece cool sounds like a good deal i don't play minecraft but yeah if you're into that and you love halo why not spend five bucks for it i know right um you can see from this the screen that they posted on their twitter that there's the halo in the background i'm not sure how pixelated that is and you can see some computers over in the kind of room or cave thing that they've created. And the chief is holding a needler, which we could probably assume that's the bow and arrow. Or at least that's what I would think it would be. So getting custom weapon skins, getting custom uh, Steve skins, and maybe some custom block pieces as well. Which seems pretty exciting to me. Yeah. Do you play Minecraft a lot, Brent? No, not at all. I played play it a little Minecraft bit now? on the PC. Uh, but it's just not something that interests me. Got it. What I mean, I get it. I get the appeal. It's just not <laughs> something I enjoy doing. It's it's video game Legos, pretty much. Yeah. I, I wasn't into the Legos that much either. That was my mm. brother's favorite thing growing up. Got it. I'm just not creative. Wonder... Enough, I guess. <laughs> ah, fair enough. I I wish I was as creative. I mean, I get on the Minecraft server every the Ready Up Live Minecraft server every now and then. There's some pretty interesting stuff that they've built. Yeah. Um, they have some pretty cool builders over there. They've built massive cities and massive skyscrapers that are just really cool to look at. Uh, with this mashup, though, I'm wondering if there's going to be any kind of forerunner structures. Like, you know how we've had... Uh, I don't know how much you know about Minecraft on the Xbox, but with all the updates that have been applied to it, um, maybe the dungeons will be something a little different. Maybe it'll be forerunner tunnels instead of dungeons. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Some other forerunner structures, maybe even Covenant... Uh, biomes that would be kind of cool um so it's it'll be interesting to see what custom pieces are going to be out there and what different things they can manipulate in the minecraft world so i'm looking forward to it um i don't think i've touched minecraft on the xbox in a while though i kind of go on it to the pc every now and then but um i think pc is just it's more powerful you have the ability to do more things and do it a lot more quickly and efficiently than on the xbox but still yeah, fun every now and then so, um, next up on the newsreel is the announcement of, um, well, kind of an announcement. There's some leaks that came out for E3 details that are, are supposed to be um, being talked about during the Xbox E3 press conference for 2014. Um, it hints at um, Halo 2 Anniversary, what we've all kind of heard from the leaks before, that it's going to be a full... Uh, visual makeover of Halo 2, including um, the same kind of options that Halo Anniversary did, where you can kind of go back and forth between the old graphics and the new graphics. And 
it also says in here that it will include the E3 2003 mission as a bonus unlockable map and the multiplayer maps from the PC version. So it kind of seems a little too good to be true um, that they yeah. would be basically adhering to everyone's wants and needs. Well, not needs, everyone's wants on the internet. That does seem like something that would be cool to just throw in there as a little unlockable because everybody talks about that mission. They do, but wasn't that supposed to be the new Mombasa mission and they just kind of yeah. changed it? I mean, this is probably just going to be something completely separate. Like you just choose it as a separate campaign, basically on its own and just play through it. I bet one of the things they're going to do is have it be unlockable, maybe via terminals. At least that's what I would guess. Yeah. So sorry I don't know for... about the maps from the PC version. So there were two. There were yeah. uh, one was called District, which was basically, um, if you think of it like kind of as an expanded version of Turf. Um, there was that one, and then Uplift was the other one. So, uh, and then there were two on the Xbox that were actually not on the PC, and that was the Hang'em High remake. Uh, I want to say it was High Noon. I can't remember if that's what it was called in the Halo Anniversary remake. Um, there was one in Halo 2 that was remade for Hang'em High. And then uh, Desolation, I think, was the other map that was remade in Halo 2 um, for the la- for the last second exclusive map. So that would be interesting, though, if they managed to have every single Halo 2 map that came out on Halo 2 Anniversary with updated visuals. That would be pretty cool. Oh, yeah be a lot of work oh yeah that's why i'm the, not sure if if that's to, gonna happen yeah and if so you, much it, money put into it yeah, lots of money lots of resources the only way i can see them doing this is if 343 has hired a lot of people since two years ago uh the same team that worked on halo 4 and that was working on halo 5 now probably and they've probably outsourced halo 2 anniversary to a third party like um, certain Infinity is probably involved with it a little bit and maybe a couple other smaller developers uh, just working the kind of the visual makeover piece and making sure that all the maps that are in there, all the campaign scripts are kind of updated to this new platform. And I bet we'll see multiplayer campaign in there as well because there was the ability to do local multiplayer on the console. And I think you could do system link multiplayer uh, campaign. I think you do two people over System Link, but you could not do it over Xbox Live. So I am bet since we got Halo Anniversary to have co-op over Xbox Live, we will definitely get Halo 2 Anniversary's campaign co-op over Xbox Live as well. Yeah, it'll be fun. Definitely. It would be interesting to see how they do it with the whole kind of split story thing. So you would, like, is one person going to be the chief and one's going to be a backup, or they're going to do basically two chiefs and two arbiters like they did in Halo 1. I have no I idea. Go, I think they would go with kind of the former on that, where it's going to be you have two chiefs and you have two arbiters. Arby's. Yeah. 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 It's going to be a lot of fun, though, if they come out with it and it does include the multiplayer as it kind of was known for, and just with the updated engine, updated graphics, and everyone is really asking for those glitches to be in there, but I I would say if they want to take them out, they should take them out. Yep. I want them out, but if they're still in there, I won't care that much. I'll just get beat yeah. over and over and over again by people who are It gives way people too a challenge to it. find new, ex- new exploits, though. Yeah. It's oh, like they'll the find new exploits. exploits. <laughs> same exploits are kind of boring, right? New exploits is where it's at. Right? Right? Yeah, but we, now we, we, they fix nudge. exploits so fast that it's not like back in the original Halo 2 days when it would take forever to get a patch out. <laughs> That's and true. Fix it up pretty quick now. It is true. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see what ha- how true this announcement is. Uh, we we do know this is part of the leak that came out on uh, NeoGAF a while ago from that one leaker that Microsoft was pursuing for a while, which kind of indicates that it may have some legitimacy to it, if maybe just one iota of legitimacy. Um, whether or not all of this is true for Halo 2 Anniversary, we'll have to wait till E3 to find out. Um, also in this article is Halo 5 will get a release date, and everyone is still kind of assuming it will be 2015 for release date, not 2014, which 
we talked about on the last show, which I think is the right thing to do for Halo. I think Halo 5 needs that clear three-year development time in order to really solidify and iron out all the kinks for the for the franchise. Yep. Needs at least a year after this E3. So we'll get one more E3 before Halo 5 comes out, and then about a couple months after that E3, it'll finally be released. Right. So I don't know how much Halo 5 info we're going to get from this E3 just because of that. I bet we'll see some kind of trailer like we saw for Halo 3 uh, at E3, what was it, 2006? Mm. With the chief walking to the crater? Or was that 2007? I think that was, 2000... I think that was 2006. I think that was 2006. Yeah, so yeah. I think we may get something like that for Halo 5. Um, and then for Halo 2 Anniversary, it'll probably be like a full-blown announcement that's coming. Oh well, yeah, but there's obviously no real spoilers you could give out. No, but it is just kind of the like it's just going to be the overall announcement, similar how they did with Halo Anniversary. It's, it's like it's there. This is what we're doing, and they're going to be able to give some more info and some solid info instead of the leaks that we're getting, or the supposed leaks because these aren't confirmed. But it'll be interesting to see, and hopefully, I'll be there to see it. Mm-hmm. And maybe there'll be some if. Halo 2 Anniversary is coming out this year. Maybe there will be something on the show floor for people to play and get a chance to see how the game feels compared to Halo 2. What if they put the Forge in Halo 2? That would be crazy. Hmm. I don't know if those maps were really designed in mind for forging aspects in there. Um, I can't remember if Forge was one of those things that they had the idea for Halo 2 and just dropped. I know Theater was one. I can't remember if Forge was. Um, if someone in the chat knows, let me know, uh, and I'll throw it up here. Um, cause I think it would be cool from a standpoint that you can move spawn points around, move flag caps and bomb plants and all that stuff. I think that would be cool. I not sure about adding additional geometry to put into the maps. Um, yeah, that'd be kinda weird. maybe something simple like crates and rocks and maybe a couple of platforms would be good, but, um, it's certainly not a question of the Xbox One can't handle it. I think it's more of a question of how much do you want to alter the experience for Halo 2 as people remember it. Because, I mean, you didn't have all of these customization options for Halo. You had, this is the way you play Halo, this is the way you play it in multiplayer, and that was it, and everyone loved that. Not to say that Forge and Theater and um, screenshots aren't important, but... If you look at kind of the roots of Halo, that's where it really started to blossom was with Halo 2. Well, I kind of expect theater, even if there's not a forge. Yeah. I mean, at this point, that's kind Theater's of Theater's kind of a gimme. Yeah. It needs to be there, if only for the publicity it gives. I mean, people, you know, take videos of awesome things that happen and put it online, and mm-hmm. that just gives you more exposure. Yeah. Uh, Halo Collector asked in the chat wonder if Halo 2 Anniversary will get 3D. Um, it's very possible. I don't see why they wouldn't, because they definitely did it with Halo Anniversary, Halo C Anniversary, so they may, may very well do it 3D. Um, I think they have some of the extra power in the Xbox One, and depending on what kind of engine updates they do to the Halo 2 engine, then they probably have a little extra power behind the the Xbox One hardware, to do something that's 3D. So I wouldn't put it past them to do it. And Godzilla Todd says, Xbox One Halo Edition. Yes, please. Um, whether or not, though, it would be Halo 2 or Halo 5, I'm not sure. Because we already have a Halo 2 exclusive console, and that was with the original Xbox. That was the green one, uh, I believe. So we already kind of have a Halo 2-themed Xbox console. So maybe Halo 5 would get custom Xbox One console. Um There wasn't a Halo CE Anniversary custom Xbox 360, so I wouldn't imagine we would get one for Halo 2 Anniversary, but I could definitely see one coming for Halo 5. I I still want that that Titanfall one. I want a cup-themed Xbox One. I'm tired of the UNSC kind of motif on everything. Oh, I love it. The Covenant Covenant would be cool, though. But I'm just saying, you know... Add a little spice in there. Shake it up a little bit. No one would expect a Covenant Xbox One. <laughs> like the Spanish Inquisition? 
like shiny purple, <laughs> like gold. That would green. that would be interesting. I mean, we did have a Halo Four that was f- Halo Four console that was Forerunner themed, yeah. so we could very well have something that's Covenant themed for an Xbox. Make it look like a wraith. That'd be cool. <laughs> I'm not. Sh- mm, it's a pretty flat wraith. Yeah, but I'm saying they could, you know, mold it a little bit, make the casing look a little different. I mean, most of the console, like official consoles, though, don't have yeah. the molding really. They just have the, the different paint. Yeah, well, the ODST you could like feel the design in it, but it really didn't like stick out that much. Yeah. So I don't think they would really change the shape of the console. I know, just to I'm do a theme console. Thinking of things I would like that they would obviously never do. I mean, they're I never going to make a covenant themed Xbox. Well, I think they, they could. I mean, think I'm, so. Think of the, like the texture from. I'm thinking of like Zealot from Halo Reach. Where you have the kind of the hexagonal patterns on the purple walls and the gold floors and that kind of stuff. Yeah. They could do that with some of the faces on the Xbox One. That would be cool. I think if you did that, like on the solid black pieces and then on the vent on the top, it could be uh, maybe gold striped with the the vent pieces. You have that gold and then some other pieces, some different kind of um, covenant colors and different kind of patterns on it. I think that'd be pretty cool. And you can have the little Covenant symbols on the top, right by the Xbox logo or something. Yeah. I think that'd be cool, personally. It'd be sweet. Yeah. So, those are some of the things that are supposedly coming up in E3 for tw- for the Xbox press release this year, which is in about a month and a half, actually. It's coming up really close, uh, really soon here. Uh, we'll see what happens when it comes around. We'll see how true these rumors are. We'll finally get some solid information on Halo 5 and the possibility of Halo 2 Anniversary. So stick to us and we'll let you know. Clarification on something from last week is we talked about the deal that Xbox was having with Showtime for a Halo feature. Well, uh, news afterwards, after we had the podcast, after we recorded it, we figured out that they're actually doing it for the Spielberg production. So the one that Steven Spielberg has been working with uh, on with 343 and with Xbox Studios is going to be de- um, dealing with Showtime. And it's going to premiere on, sh- it sounds like from what I've read so far, it's going to premiere on Showtime and then premiere on Xbox One. Um, I don't, s- not exactly sure on that. Uh, I just know from a couple of tweets that I got and some other uh, some other news things that they're, they are going to be, um, doing the Spielberg production on Showtime as well. So that's going to be cool. It's going to hit mainstream TV, though. Yeah, I just don't know if the Showtime audience is really the the Halo audience. There's a lot of overlap I don't think it there. is. Yeah. It's I, kind of a weird choice. It is a very interesting choice because it's not s- something I think a lot of people that normally watch Showtime... Now, I don't even know if there is like a particular audience that watches Showtime, like people watch ABC or NBC or CNN or stuff like that. I don't know if there's that kind of a regular audience or it's if it's just more people are kind of scrolling through Showtime to see, to see what's on. I don't know how that audience really interacts with it. So maybe it's something that won't be too bad. Maybe it's something that um, you just manage to go over and you have it. And it, I can't, rem- I can't remember if Showtime is one of those where you have to have a special subscription for your TV provider. I think it may not be, but check your local TV listings, of course, to see if you have Showtime available in your TV package. Um, I want to. S- my gut says it's not going to be your basic package. Uh, it's probably going to be one of those additional tiers. Uh, but that's that's just kind of a gut feeling I have. Yeah. Um, if someone in the chat has can look up theirs real quick and see if they have Showtime on their subscription, then definitely. Throw it up there and let us know. Um, another thing that came out earlier this week was a article from Gamers for the Win, uh, a UK website, and the title is, Is Halo 5 going to be open world? According to Industry Insider, yes. So someone by the name of Ashan Rashid says, Halo 5 is going more or less open world. And this is something that's very different from what Halo has done in the past. It's very much been a rail shooter in terms of the campaign. And depending to, on this guy, or according to this guy, it seems like they're kind of taking a different approach. 
uh, trying to uh, work the creative juices a little bit to see if something like an open world would be feasible for Halo. Um, Bungie is kind of working that angle with Destiny with their game. So it kind of makes sense to possibly try it with Halo as well. And I think we've talked about that a lot on the podcast and various shows in the past about the idea of doing something open world, doing something that's you have optional objectives that you can complete to maybe make something uh, a, a, an objective down the road easier or harder based on whether or not you complete those objectives. And I think that kind of system would be very interesting to experiment with, very interesting to uh, see how fans react to that kind of thing. Uh, I th- it does go against a lot of traditional Halo style um, storytelling. Uh, we know we have a very kind of strictly lined up story from the books, from the games, and from other uh, Halo publications that kind of um, help with the campaign. I'm missing words right now. <laughs> but it's something that I think could work. What, what's your thoughts on this, Brent? I think, I think you I'm may have a little bit... I think I'm you know, I'm kind of tired of the whole very scripted, very linear campaign style in video games. Uh, more and more, I find myself enjoying the open world games better. Um, so I could see it working for this. I mean, it's not that difficult. It, if as long as there's not like RPG elements, I think it'll work out. Yeah, and something that's not quite as Borderlandsy. Yeah, I think that's what thing- Destiny's trying to do is be like massively multiplayer Xbox Borderlands for the new generation. Whereas Halo 5, if it goes open world, it's just like, hey, instead of confining you to this one corridor where you, you know, shoot aliens and then move on, we're just going to let you, you know, run around the entire world and find the objective that way. I mean, you can still have set objectives and scripted events and stuff like that. I mean, uh huh. It's not like the open world kind of no, and those is- the thing with what you said about not being quite like Borderlands, not as RPG-ish, though, is there's a lot of comparisons between Destiny and Borderlands. So yeah. you're almost saying if we wanted something like, kind of like Destiny, how they're doing their open world, we're kind of wanting something similar to an RPG-ish style, which I don't think, like you said, would work too well with Halo. Well, no, I, I think Halo mean, still I, needs that the linear idea of like kind of progress. A first-person shooter in an open world. Like, that's a pretty novel concept nowadays. I mean, it, it used to be way more novel than it is now, but it's still pretty novel. It, it's a new thing. Generally, open world is third person. It's not first person. And then right. Borderlands and kind of change that up. But even Borderlands, you could say, isn't massively open world. I don't think to the extent that Destiny and Halo 5 want, might want to be. Well, I think the challenge to that is making it to where you don't affect the story too much because the Halo story is very much laid out and it has been laid out. And I don't think from the fan's perspective you want something that is quite as open. You you want it to be open to the point where you can kind of influence how you experience the story. But I don't think you really need to alter the end game, the, the, the major decisions in the game. Like Mass Effect, you can change quite a bit of the game just from early on with how you make your decisions. And I don't think you can quite do that and quite have that kind of freedom with Halo. No. I think it still needs to be open world to a, like, I, I guess, for example, like, taking a cruise, like, you could you go along this straight path for the most part during this trip, but you have stops along the way where you can kind of branch out and do things that changes your experience. I think it's something a little bit like that, but I think ultimately the story is going to be defined by 343. Uh, I think I would want that personally instead of kind of defining my own experience because it's Master Chief. It's one character that we're focusing on and it's we're experiencing his story throughout this universe. If it were something to be something like Halo Reach where they were really focusing on your character, the way that you interacted with the game, then I could see that being a lot more open. You drive the decisions behind what happens in the game which is a lot what Destiny is trying to do with their story, is you make your character, your character is who you want it to be, your decisions affect the outcome and how you experience Destiny. And I don't think you could do that with Halo, at least with the Master Chief story. Um, If they do come to a point where they're developing kind of a side-by-side game where you have Master Chief in this one part of the Halo universe doing one thing 
and then you have your own Spartan, like you did with Halo Reach, kind of doing your own thing and wanted to develop that and have people really develop their own character, then I think that is where the open world, the RPG style, the Borderlands-ish kind of gameplay would be better fostered. Yeah. Open world, though, from a first-person shooter perspective, um, I think can work for the Master Chief story, though. I think it just has to be open around the kind of general direction that 343 wants people to experience the Master Chief story. And I think they'll do that. I mean, there's obviously going to be one story for the chief. There's not going to be like moral decisions during the, you know, course of the game, like Mass Effect or anything like that. I mean, there's no moral decisions in Borderlands. No. You have quests and you finish them. You right. can go anywhere you want on the world, but the quest will not finish itself. There's a very, you know, specific thing that you have to do to finish the quest. Exactly. And there's... With Borderlands, though, it's you do have a lot of side quests. Um, I don't know if that's the right way to do it for Halo, or at least kind of use the whole side quest notion. Um, I think optional objectives seems a little bit more um, applicable to Halo. Yeah. I could see, like, objectives that aren't immediately obvious to you. I mean, traditionally, when you get an objective, it shows up on your screen. You know, if it's a side quest, if it's optional, it'll still show up and you can see that that's an option. But right. I would like a game where the options aren't immediately apparent to you. You have to explore, you have to discover things and figure out what in the hell's going on. Kind of like that. It's more of a, yeah. a detective work style of game instead of just having everything handed to me. Because that kind well, of open world system is awful. I hate that. <laughs> so the funny thing was I was kind of about to suggest that too, kind of taking the Dark Souls mentality where everything is not necessarily laid out for you, but you can figure out, you need to figure out where you need to go. Yeah. Like with Halo, you always, there's always an objective. You always know what you're doing. Cortana's always been there telling you, okay, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this. Maybe since Cortana isn't there anymore, Chief is out on his own. He needs to figure out what to do. He needs to go and figure out those clues that will tell him he needs to go to this place, to this place, and do all that. So that might be where the open world aspect comes in. And I think that, while not a lot of gamers don't like that because they like to be handheld, they like to kind of be taken through the experience, I think that would be a really interesting game mechanic to explore for Halo. Because if you think about it, that's kind of how life is. You don't really have a certain sense of knowing exactly what you're doing, and after you're done, you know you're going to this part. Life yeah. is a journey, so why not make Halo a journey? Yeah. You're finding you're finding the journey, and three for three through that storytelling would kind of be still have that story they want you to encounter, but they're going to let you encounter it and let you figure it out in your own way. Also, if I think, the world's larger, I want more Easter eggs, and I want them to be good Easter yes. eggs and not the crap yes. Easter eggs from Halo 4. There weren't very many Easter eggs in Halo 4. I'm I'm wondering if that was more because Bungie's just a little bit more creative than Halo, or not Halo, 343 was. If 343 was a little more under the, the deadline and the pressure to focus on the content and the gameplay of the and the mechanics of the game instead of being able to flex their creative juices because they spent a lot of time on making Halo look pretty. Yeah. That's, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, that's a it's good a thing. I'm game. just saying... For me, the the skulls in Halo 2 were like a separate campaign all of their own, you know? It's like opening up a second campaign. It's something crazy like that, like a, a system of Easter eggs like that is just... It was incredibly fun. Yeah. And it was different, you know? It didn't happen all the time. There, Generally, when you find a, an Easter egg in a game, it's like super inconsequential. You know, you just find it and that's like the only one or there's, you know, one of a handful that are not connected in any way. And they usually don't do anything. You know, it's just a visual effect. And those are fun to find, too. But the skulls actually altered the campaign. So, I mean... Yeah, they did. Finding... Is, is creating some sort of set of Easter eggs that would alter the world or, you know, make it more fun or, you know, kooky or whatever. That, that would just be fun for me. I just want to see some fun Easter eggs in Halo 5. Because I missed them from Halo 2 and Halo 3. Yeah. Halo Reach had a couple good ones, too. Yeah. I really didn't get into the... But 
the secrets think, in Halo Reach, though. Yeah, I mean, there wasn't the quality of them. Def- I just never got into it. Right, Halo Two and Halo Three were definitely the big ones, though. And and I believe Bungie even came out and said there are still Halo Three Easter eggs that haven't been found yet. Ooh, yeah. I wish. That, I mean, at some point, I don't, I don't know. know. It's kind I of Bungie style to, to not. Yeah, uh, it's kind of Bungie style to not go out and explicitly say spill all their secrets. Yeah, I guess it's not a real fun secret if they just go and tell everybody. So knowing that there's things out there that haven't been found yet, that's cool. Of course, we have no idea what we're looking for. <laughs> yeah. True. So that open world idea, I think, would be really cool. Um, it would be interesting to see how they approach it. I think it has potential, and we won't see that for a while, probably, unless they make an announcement at E3 for it. If it's part of the trailer that they show, or if it's maybe a line that they put in during the presentation, is we're yet, it's kind of yet to be seen whether or not we'll get that kind of experience. But I think for Halo, it could be done. And maybe that's some kind of ex- new experience that uh, would kind of give Halo a refresh that 343 could build upon, at least from the campaign perspective. Multiplayer, they still have a lot to iron out and a lot to figure out. And I don't think we'll really see too much of that at E3 this year. I think we'll see it maybe in a beta format, maybe closer to E3 for next year, if Halo 5 is announced to be coming out next year. And then we'll see, we'll get more multiplayer details next year instead of this year. Yeah. Of course, there will probably be leaks, though, so we'll probably get some leaked information. But from an official standpoint, I don't really see us getting much multiplayer information until next year. That is, of course, depending on what they announced at E3 this year. Well, multiplayer obviously takes more development time in the actual you know, game design phase. Yeah. You never know what's going to work. You never know what's going to break the game at any given time. Like, you can break single player, kind of. I mean, not awfully, but if you have a rocket launcher in a certain section, it just makes things easier. Like, no one's going to care, ultimately. But you mess something right. up in multiplayer, everybody's going to care. <laughs> it's the balance. It's where everyone comes to play. It's the big sandbox. It's in the game. It's in the game. Yeah, but it's still one of those <laughs> things that you got to make sure that the game's solid. Yeah. You got to make sure it's the experience that people are going to be wanting to play. And Halo 4 didn't have that, unfortunately. At least that's how a lot of people feel about it. Moving on to the bulletin, we got more information for uh, just kind of community-related stuff. Um, first up, for those that haven't been on Twitter today, today is Bravo's birthday. So... Uh, for those listening in the stream, go and wish him a happy birthday if you haven't already. For those listening to us, I'm sure he would appreciate the late birthday tweet. So give him a congrats. I think he tweeted, or someone tweeted out a birthday cake that they made for him uh, with Bravo on the cake and big round kind of buttons. So that was pretty cool. So Bravo, if you're listening to this, happy birthday, dude. Um, you're that much older and that much closer to getting to Frankie's age. Isn't that a scary thought? (laughs) The baldness to come. We have a new speed record for Halo on Legendary, though. That's pretty cool. Uh, Someone by the name of Goat Rope. um, Andrew Haliborda. I think that's how you say his name. He broke the speed record for Halo Combat Evolved on Legendary. And he set a new record at 1 hour, 38 minutes, and 57 seconds. That right. is really fast to play Halo on Legendary. Oh, yeah. Really fast. So that's a, a pretty good record, I would say. I can't remember what the one was before it. I think it was something uh, that was closer to 2 hours. Uh, but that's pretty good, nonetheless. So way to go, uh, Goat Rope. Uh, you'll have some competitors probably coming up behind you trying to figure out little quicker ways to do it, but we probably won't see a new record for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's one of the problems with having to put your speed run record video up. I mean, you obviously have to, to prove that you did it, but then everybody knows your yep. secrets, your tactics. Yep. <laughs> so then you got to figure like out a, new tactics. Yeah. Or just, I mean, well, people are already about, improving on your own. Well, the thing about speed running too is, is you have to nail everything the first time. There Screw are up once, it's almost over. no, yeah. There are almost no retries. Like if you fail two or three times, you, you're pretty much done. Yeah. There's no way you can recover. 
So the fact that he got a new speedrun record is pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. You have to be flawless. Exactly. You have to be like a machine. You have Execution. to be like the chief. You have to be like the chief. So congratulations, dude. That's a, a fantastic record. And hope you hold it for a while because that is freaking fast. I think the last time I played Halo and Legendary... It took me maybe six hours, six and a half hours to beat. And that was, I think I did a speed run back in 2000. Well, not necessarily a speed run, but I did a full Halo campaign stream. And I think for Halo 1, it took me about six and a half hours to do. So that's, that's great, man. That's, that's ridiculous. Next up on the bulletin is we have the matchmaking playlist update. We have Dominion coming back around Woo! into the playlist spotlight. Yeah. It's going to be a little different, though, this time. Instead of the 5v5 that we're used to, it's going to be called Dominion Light, and it's going to be 4v4. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that, to be honest. Um, I think with the smaller maps, it may be a pretty good experience, but I've always, I always liked having that 5v5 offset to be a little bit bigger of an, ex- of an experience, but not too big. Yeah, I don't think it'll ruin it too much, but I prefer 5v5. I don't understand why they chose 4v4 unless it's just their game types or the maps they've chosen. (laughs) I think it's something that they just want to experiment with it, see what people think about it, and maybe... I mean, because 4v4 is more of the competitive style than the more casual style of 5v5 or something that's off of the 4v4 uh, team structure. So with the smaller maps, it will probably work out pretty good. It's just going to be how that experience flows. Um, Because it's not just the 4v4 they're changing. They're also changing um, how the scoring works a little bit. Uh, The resupply drops whenever you get that turnover. So the every 45 seconds or so you get a resupply. Um, It's going to be smaller resupply drops, so different kinds of weapons, different um, enhancements to like whether it's going to be speed boost or damage boost or... If you get grenades, it's going to be probably a smaller number of those. And, of course, we're going to get new maps for this as well. So the maps that we're getting is the Ark, Black Sight, Graphite, Hekau, Honeycomb, Inheritor, Onyx, Serenity, Shutout, Station 9, Plaza, and Procedure. There are a few in there I do not recognize. I don't recognize Honeycomb or Graphite. I don't recognize oh. the Ark, Honeycomb, uh, and Procedure. Plaza yeah. sounds vaguely familiar, and that's the only other one I'm kind of questioning. I don't know about Procedure. So we got new new Forge maps, possibly, which is yeah. always good. It's always nice to see community content be put into the game. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'll probably hop in for a few times in this playlist. Uh, I have played Halo quite a while. I've been playing a lot of Titanfall, to be honest. So. There's going to be some good stuff, I think, with, with this playlist. Uh, despite it being 4v4 instead of 5v5, I think it'll be a lot of fun. And the community choice is Team Ninja Assassins. At least it's not Shotgun CTF. Because that no. would just be not very that, fun. I'm, okay. Yeah, I'm not... Sh- yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I would do if that was the case. But I would have rather had Sticky Ball. I just enjoy Oddball. Oddball is pretty fun. Yeah. But that's going to come to the, uh, I believe, Action Sack playlist. Um, so we're, I think Team Ninja Assassin, it's, it's an okay. It's like the offshoot of Shoddy Swords, and you get the additional uh, points for assassinating somebody. But I'm kind of with Brent where I think Sticky Ball would have been more fun. People love swords, Dusty. They yeah, they like, away. they like that sword, like the swish swish stab. More on the playlist updating front is... A little bit easier way to figure out what's new in the matchmaking playlist. So whenever you go into matchmaking now, if there's a new playlist or if there's an update to a playlist, then they're going to have a little banner on the little on the corner of the image that you get. Oh. So if you're able if you're able to go look at the bulletin, check out the Halo 4 playlist flags. They have an example on there where Dominion Light, which is the one that's going to come next week on the on the rotational playlist, which is called Feature Playlist, actually. It has a little banner in the corner that says Feature Playlist. And then SWAT is something that they're going to be updating next week, too, it seems. And it says New Maps and New Game Types. 
So you won't have to be going around searching for which playlists have updates. You will be able to just go in and see, oh, there's new stuff in this one and new stuff in this one. Time for me to go check it out, see what's there. Yeah, I think it'll be helpful for uh, kind of spreading out the population, maybe. When people see that, <laughs> you know, one playlist has a update, you know, can go over there, check it out for a while. But uh, I think most people are just playing heavies right now. Yeah, heavies is... It's where it's at, man. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Receptor17 in the chat said, sad face, I want sticky ball as well. So we're yeah. not alone. Not alone. Uh, some science-related news in the bulletin this week. Uh, some uh, Russian scientists were able to successfully create the 117th element, and it's called unobseptium. So nothing that's Halo-related. But with it being 117, it's kind of pretty cool that it's there for uh, Halo fans. We got a 117 element, or at least that's like in the periodic table that would fall under the 117 spot. Not necessarily the 117th element to be discovered. But element 117 is there, and it's um, used to do a little bit more research on kind of... um, nuclear research and how things just kind of different physical and chemical properties with heavier elements and uh, isotopes of elements that are byproducts of things that are that dense. Um, So it's pretty interesting stuff. I'm not a chemist to really know all what you can do with those heavier elements, but I'm assuming for the people that are um, like naked Eli would probably know a little bit more about this kind of thing. Yeah. So, well, I mean, um, cool. What? Yep. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to add something to no, that. I wasn't going to add anything. I mean, really, the only reason that they even brought it up was it's one one seven. Yeah. Which Pretty is cool. much. Yep. Uh, and then, last but not least, screenshot of the week. So these are pretty cool. This one's for multi team. So we have lots of colored Spartans in here, other than just the normal red and blue. These are going to be difficult to choose from. Uh, Brent was saying before the show that he was kind of going back and, t- and, bet- back and forth between two of them. Uh, for me, I'm going to say my favorites would be Brothers by Stealth Ace, um, Rainbow by Z6 Nitro, and um, Scattershot by Liz King Numbers. <laughs> 10, 15, 2011. Those are kind of my favorites. Sorry, Receptor. <laughs> I'm stuck between Rainbow by Z6 Nitro and Rocket Goose. But I think I'm going to have to go with Rainbow just because it has all four multi-team colors. Yeah. And it looks like one is trying to kill the other and one's trying to kill that guy and then the one's trying to kill that guy. It's like a lineup of death just waiting to happen with the oddball. It's kind of crazy. So. Yeah. Cool stuff. Um, we were going to talk about Halo communities tonight. That was going to be the topic of our discussion, our main kind of roundtable discussion. And I guess a couple of things we can talk about is just how the community behaves as in, as entities. We have a lot of different Halo communities out there, lots of different things that people rally for and come together on with different aspects of Halo, whether it be Machinima whether it be multiplayer, whether it be campaign, whether it be making props, whether it be making toys and collecting toys, all those kinds of things really foster different kinds of communities out there. And one of the things I think the Halo community as a whole has gotten into a bad rap is being so disconnected with one another, being so isolated, that there's really not much conglomeration, not much collaboration in terms of having the Halo community as a whole be an interesting place and be a welcoming place for people to be. There are websites out there that are dedicated to that kind of thing, like halo.bungie.org is very easy to get into. Um, Halo Unity at one point was really easy to get into. And there are these ways that people could try to get involved, but there's really no welcoming committee when it's when it comes to Halo, where you could go to Waypoint after you get into Halo. It's like, here's places you can get involved with. Those kind of things don't exactly exist in Halo today. And I think with 
how Bungie interacted with the community was a lot better and they featured a lot more um, content in a way that made it seem like the contributions that the community were putting forth were meaningful. Were not not to wrap on Halo Waypoint, but it seems a little more kind of like reposting. Like it's like okay, we get information. This is kind of cool. We put it out there. Bungie's done a very good job in the past, though, of really highlighting, really taking the time to dive in and delve deep into what some like what community people are doing and present that and really emphasize how cool that thing is. And I would like to see 343 at some point try to embrace that kind of interaction with the communities at large again, Uh, kind of foster that community involvement between the developer and between the fans of the game. And I mean, they have waypoint and they have a method of distribution. I mean, they, they need to be community curators but and that's something that's kind of hard with it now being owned by big mother microsoft yeah it's hard to break out of that corporate shell to really dive into a sense of what your own game and product is really connect with community on that level cuz i feel that the most sense of community i get with 343 is at events like PAX and RTX where you're there with them be able to talk to them in a little bit more freeform manner. There's still this kind of air of they have to be professional and they're still disconnected though. And I, I remember talking about this somewhere. I think it was on the PAX podcast I did with Vanny, um, where we talked about community interaction when we got to talk with the Titanfall developers and we got to um, go up to the signing and talk to the Borderlands or the, the Gearbox folks and it's it's really interesting to see the dynamic of how 343 presents themselves to the community and how some of these more independent, a little more um, kind of loose off from their publishers interact with their communities, how they really go out and support it. Not to say that 343 doesn't support the community, because they do. They do a lot of community support. It's just their presentation seems a little more restrained yeah Not, it's probably just microsoft policy at the end of the day that, that, that's I all that's i can think it of is. i mean what's the problem with highlighting community contributions i mean at least with a game like halo where they have acknowledged basically that people love making halo stuff they love making their own halo videos and machinima and game types and forge art stuff like that so it's obviously a game where that's, you know, accepted by Microsoft as something where that's going to happen. They don't really have control over the the images in Halo. They would like to have full control, but they don't. And Halo's more popular because of the the community contributions. I mean, that whenever you can put something into a community and feel like that's something you can be proud of, something you made. I mean, that's a lot more fulfilling as a gamer than just going in and playing a game and enjoying it. I mean, that that's a good experience, but creating something for a community is a, a much more fulfilling experience in my opinion. Yeah. And so I, I just don't understand. So Microsoft knows that, that this happens, that Halo is a game that people love playing with, you know, with videos and, and creatively, but they're afraid to have their community managers kind of take a bigger role in interacting with, you know, people making this stuff in the Halo community. And I mean, they do, yeah. they, 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 I mean, there's stuff on Halo Waypoint, like you're saying, and they do show up at events and they, they talk to the fans and stuff, but it, I, I just don't understand what they're afraid of. Like, what's this awful, like doomsday scenario that you have leaks, a developer. Man. I mean, unless it's like somebody who's deep in development and has trade secrets and the people they're talking to are like, some sort of corporate spy for another game development studio that wants in on those secrets. I mean, that, that would obviously be bad. Or if you had game code and then they were somehow able to steal game code, that would be bad. But I mean, just interacting and saying, Hey, we, we like your community. We're going to talk to you and, and, you know, to highlight, show people why your community's awesome and we're going to support y'all. I don't see what, what harm that could do. I mean, I understand trying to keep secrets in certain times to, because you want to surprise people. You want to 
not necessarily let things out of the bag until it's ready, until it's time to make a presentation. But take what Titanfall did. See that they were able to, despite the leaks that come out, they they took that in. It's like, okay, this happened. We'll go ahead and say, yeah, it, it's there. Not exactly ready to talk about it yet, but we can confirm that it does exist. And I think that kind of approach is a lot more supportive of the community, a lot more inf- like the community feels involved and feels welcomed into the experience. Like, oh, you actually think we're cool people. You you actually like your community. We will support you even more. Because a lot of the hype behind Titanfall was behind the community really getting other people pumped for it. It wasn't something that they were going out and pushing a lot of commercials and doing a lot of publicity for it. It was something that the community behind Titanfall was pushing people. Um, the the gameplay at PAX Prime last year, a lot of people got onto Titanfall then, and it spread around the internet like wildfire. And I was one of those people who was like, uh, I'm not sure. And when I got to play Alpha, I'm like, I'm sold. I understand why people like this. This is amazing. And I started to advertise the heck out of it on Twitter. It's like, I can't get enough of this game. I am really way... I am really ready to play Titanfall. And I think part of that is the Titanfall community staff were really open to not being so controlling over what was out there and being a little bit more open, not necessarily just randomly posting stuff out there they didn't want to post out, but being a little more responsive to the community, being a little more interactive with the community and supporting the stuff that they did want to talk about and really engaging people on a friendly level where Microsoft is a lot more business attire, coat and tie official meeting places like, Oh, we have this is this is this is this. And it's like, Oh, we heard about this thing over here. Uh, we don't know what you're talking about. We can't talk about that kind of thing. So it's different mindsets that is, I would, I would like to see three, four, three be like a little more like Bungie in a way where they're, yeah, they, they need to keep certain things, close slipped and as close to them as they can. But if something gets out, they need to embrace the fact that I got out and not just shrug it off the shoulder. Just like maybe acknowledge it to a certain extent, but don't act like um, there's a certain word I'm looking for. I'm not exactly sure, but not, not being all tense whenever you're interacting with your community, not making it come across where you're, you're being super careful with everything that you're saying. Yeah, we're not your enemy. We're not spies. Well, some of us might be. I'm not. <laughs> Dusty's not. I mean, I'm, I don't even want any secrets. I don't want any development secrets. I'm just saying, like, be involved in the community and talk about the game that you did put out. Right. You know, I mean, it, it, be out there talking about Halo 4. Be out there talking about the different multimedia stuff you're putting out, the books, the comics. That stuff's all coming out. I mean, once it's out, it's out. Exactly. You don't even have to spoil it. Just talk about it. Talk to the people that or talking about it, you know, I mean, get them featured on the site more prominently. I mean, make it hi- obvious your that, game. Yeah. Just make I mean, it obvious that community is a big part of halo. It, it's always been a big part of halo, but now if somebody looks into halo, it, it wouldn't be as obvious as it would be back in the, in the halo two and halo three days. Definitely. Or you not. could go on to bungee dot or uh, yeah, bungee dot net. You'd find, you know, all of these different websites you could go to, all these different communities you could join. But now it's just like, yeah, there's some communities out there, but you kind of have to look through the the different blog posts at the bottom of the Waypoint page to find them. It just seems like they had to step back a little bit. Like Microsoft said, hey, we don't like what these Bungie guys did with their community. They let them get a little too buddy-buddy, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, but <laughs> you're a fully-owned subsidiary of uh, Microsoft, so you really don't have much of a choice. You're going to have to back off. Yeah. And I think there are ways that can be improved drastically. I really do. Whether or not they're willing to change, whether or not they're going to let Microsoft hold on to that kind of feeling of insecurity when it comes to people possibly finding out about certain things with the game and just kind of the general fear of when you talk to the community, you might accidentally let something out. I think that is killing off a lot of the community involvement that Halo fans used to have with the developer. And the developer has changed. Times have changed with Halo, which sucks, but 
with Halo 5 coming around the corner, with Halo 2 Anniversary um, almost on their doorstep, if it is something that's going to be coming, it's something that 343 is going to have to address, the way that they really interact with the community, the way they are going to present themselves, whether it be in a public forum or just um, in one-to-one conversations with people. Bring back the clan system. <laughs> that, uh, that fosters a certain kind of community, though. That's that's more like inter-community um, responsiveness to where you but have I mean, different communities being able to to interact with each other on a different kind of medium where you can have clan matches and you can go in and it's like, oh, hey, I'm part of this clan. You should come check us out kind of thing. Um, I'm not even talking about the, the gameplay ramifications of actual like clan matches. I'm just saying the idea of having a way to officially identify you as part of a group in game. You know, I mean, you see a group of people playing, they're from a community, be like, hey, you're all in a community. Like, uh, maybe I want to join. Yeah. And Make we, it obvious and that there are different right. kind of homegrown communities out there. That That's kind of the other flip side of the whole community thing, too. There's there's two sides when it comes to Halo in, in the community. One is the involvement that 343 has and the quote-unquote relationship that 343 has with its community as a whole and with the sub its subsidiaries, the, the sub- subsidiaries of the community, so to speak. And then there's a sense of community in terms of inter-community relationships and support, and then community within the members of that community. So I guess it really breaks it down to three different kinds of community ideas of thought for Halo. And they've all had its prime every at every stage of Halo. Um, Halo 2 had that sense of clans, because we did have the clans, so there was, there was that real interpersonal relationship with communities, and then you had the intercommunity relationship. And then I think as Halo 2 matured, you had a lot more interaction with the studio and the players where you had the hump day challenges and you had bungee day and those kind of events that really fostered community growth and development and interaction with the developers. And then when it got to Waypoint and three and 343 Industries, a lot of stuff became behind closed doors, became hush hush in a sense. Um, I, I think Bungie has a lot better ways of dealing with leaks than Halo Waypoint has right now. I think that's something that Bungie just developed over time, and it's something that 343 might not just have a hold on yet, but between all the leaks that have come out and them not saying a word and basically trying to hush everyone up about it, which just makes people talk about it more, to be honest... And just the way they give off that feel of interacting with the community is kind of offsetting. And it's almost like, yeah, they want to be involved with the community, but they don't want to be too involved with that kind of thing. They're not willing to commit in the relationship. They're just not that into they're you. Not, they're not willing to put the ring on it. The big halo ring, that is. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about tonight. Um, I'm going to try to get some people on for next week, some more people on for next week which may change up the times for broadcasting a little bit because I do want to have a big round table discussion. I do want to get other people's ideas on this. And I know there are people out there that share some of my views, but I want to get a big discussion on this topic going because it's something that is very important. I think um, the way that community interacts with each other, the way that community is viewed by the studio and the way that we just interact with each other really um, I think one of the reasons why um, competitive Halo is such is in such a disarray is not just because of what happened with AGL, but I think it's just the mindset that people have going in. It's where they want to be babied through some a lot of stuff. It's like they don't want to put the time and effort it takes to maintain a community. And and huge shout outs to the guys over at TeamBeyond.net. I mean, they've put on some Halo tournaments lately that have been pretty successful and they're trying to keep halo at the forefront of people's minds that are still interested in the game that are willing to um, put out for halo is like, and for those that still say, Hey, we still like halo regardless of where it's at and we're going to support it, whether or not it's a good game and we will still be around given 
whether or not Halo 5 is a good game. And if we don't think it's a good game, then we'll step down from it, maybe. But for those that are willing to, to support Halo, support 343, then they're making their stand for it. And that's those are the kinds of people that we need in the Halo community. Yeah. People it's that easier are willing to do to... it. Go ahead. I was going to say, it's easier to do it when you have a lot of support from the developers and you have a game that is well received by a lot of people and you have a lot more people involved with the community process. But for those that are still out there that are still holding on to the Halo community, that are still trying to foster this sense of family for people that still enjoy Halo, those are the real kind of patron saints of the Halo community as a whole, I think. And I think that includes people like Goose Checka, like Green Skull, like Saucy. Um, Dust Storm. Dude, well, not to toot my own horn, but if people think that, then yeah, sure, me. Um, Naked Eli, kind of. Um, and other people that are kind of big in the Halo scene. Um, then yeah, I think those people are some of the people that are really keeping this going. Claude, um, Claude Herrera. I mean, the he's pretty much the the Halo Godfather, so to speak, for all communities that are Halo related. So, um, he set foundations for that. Even though he's kind of taken a, taken a little bit of a step back, there's he's still posting stuff on HBO and he's still um, involved with the um, with with stuff that's going on over there, but. All these people are make made have made huge contributions in the past and are still making contributions to the Halo community as a whole. And it's stuff like those kinds of people that I think the Halo community really weighs heavily on. Those kinds of people deserve a Halo Five closed beta. <laughs> Let me in. Please. I, th- I think that me. would be a good audience though. I think the people that have put time and effort into supporting Halo whether it be establishing communities, creating tournaments, doing YouTube videos, and all that stuff, I think those people deserve some recognition. And Goose, Check, and Green Skull have gotten that recognition already. They are Microsoft MVPs. Um, they, 3 for 3 has realized their involvement with Halo and their dedication to Halo, and they got those awards, which is really great. Um, it says a lot about their dedication to Halo and... Um, everything that 343 has tried to do with Halo 4. I think more people need to kind of step up, uh, not necessarily to that high of a role, but just need to step up in their own way and really stand out and give a voice for Halo. Are you trying to tell me something, Dusty? Um, Maybe <laughs> subliminally, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I wish I, I could have, I know you have some free time on your hands. Yeah. Not, not much, I, but some. I just can't figure out what to do. That's the problem. It, it's it's not lack of ideas. It's just lack of good ideas. Ideas that would be interesting. Things that people would want to see. Well, you don't know whether or not it's a good idea unless you try it, right? Right. So I'll try to step up. I'll try to be a good <laughs> Halo community dude. Yeah. And, and we're going to branch out here really soon, guys. Um, I'm talking with someone this weekend on getting the forums going, getting some graphical design, getting some graphics up and going for the forums to get that all prepped for E3. Cause that's going to be the big, that's, that's like the ultimate deadline for me is getting that up for E3 and try to bring Halo back or try to bring Pottacular back to a substantial standing within Halo, the Halo community. And hopefully with that, we'll get more people to listen to us. Hopefully with that, we'll get um, more involvement with other communities, get more involvement with 343. And I'm hoping with a lot of announcement going on with at E3 this year for Halo that 343 is a little bit more comfortable around people to talk. Because if I go to E3, I'm going to be asking a bunch of questions. And there will be plenty of videos, plenty of podcasts. There will probably be something I will post every day, if not multiple times a day while I'm at E3. Sweet. At least that's the plan. So uh, thank you guys for listening in. Thank you for listening to my rant about the community. We will definitely be talking about this again very soon. And just... If you're out there, if you have ways, if you have ideas for people to get involved with things, if if you if you even have something you want to like mention to three for three, if you have like a concern or something, their doors are always open and they'll read stuff. They may not reply to it, but 
Um, Jess has always been pretty good about replying to Twitter. Um, and I'm Bravo seems to be doing a pretty good job of that as well. Um, they, you can definitely reach them via email. Um, they've put out their emails in several places. You can get to them and just make your voice be heard. I mean, this is an outlet for myself and Brent to really voice our concerns and our opinions. And we're, um, getting involved with a few more people and we're trying to branch out again and really get our voice out there because I think a podcast platform is good to really house these kinds of discussions. I think when you look at it, the news is great. All the YouTubers are good at supplying information that come out, that comes out all the big news stories and stuff. But when it comes to really understanding what halo is, what the community means, what all the different, what all the news means, I think podcasting, is probably the best platform to do it with. Do it in. Yeah. So, um, that wraps it up for this episode. We will be back next week. Not sure if it's going to be on Thursday or Friday, depending on whether or not we can get people on to actually do our Halo 5 talks. And we'll let you know, definitely via the website and via Twitter and Facebook, when that's actually going to go down. Uh, if you guys have ideas for anything you want us to talk about, definitely shoot us a line. Uh, you can tweet at, tweet at us, send us a Facebook message or post on our Facebook wall, uh, or you can send us an email, uh, call or listen to voicemail, do all that. Um, you can find us at podtacular.com and find links to all those. And our voicemail is 240-200-HALO. Um, call into that. Uh, let us know your thoughts on anything we talked about tonight. Anything or any concerns that you may have with Halo 5, something that you would want us to talk about. Uh, maybe if you, if I do go out to E3, then maybe some questions you want us to ask the 343 folks about anything upcoming or even anything in the past, anything that's out there right now. Uh, those would be valid questions too. They would be a lot more open to talk about things that are already out there than I think they would be to talk about future projects. So that's one way to get involved. Just kind of voice your opinions, get your, get your voice out there, get your thoughts out there, and have people start talking. And that's a good way to do it. Check out our friends on the podcast network. Uh, you can find them at thepodcast.com. Uh, podcasts featured over there are podcasts such as Guardian Radio, Critscast, Reachcast, How to Murder Time, and Work in Progress. There is some pretty interesting developments going on with the Halo Mole. Uh, that is under production as well. Ever since I got back in, I've kind of been working on that a little bit more. I have been given a certain deadline, which I will try to hit. Uh, whether or not that will be hit is still a question to be remained, but um, check us out. We will have an update really, really soon, actually. Um, at least on our YouTube, probably within the next week and a half or so. And yeah, check that out. Um... Uh, uh, I have a personal gaming blog for any of those that are interested. Um, dustybit.com. Head on over there. Uh, I did a podcast with Lady Luck. Some of you guys may know who she is. Uh, over from Gamertag Radio talking about my current views on Destiny. With all the news that came out last week, the big info explosion that was uh, bombed on us last Monday. So if you want to listen to that, go on over and check it out. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Brent, any last comments? Uh, nope. I think that was it. Kind of a slow news week, but it's going to be we that way until, stuff, uh, E3. Yeah, six weeks away, man. Yep. Oh, man, or, I can't no, wait. No, five weeks away. Sorry, five weeks away. We're kind of in between there. You know, E3 recently, I mean, and not recently, but like the past five or six years has been like kind of a disappointment every year. But I always get excited every year for some reason. Well, this year should be... Yeah, this is should, probably going to be one of the better ones. Yeah, this should be especially exciting, because it is going to be Halo that's coming around. Oh, yeah. Halo 5 info. Just any kind of info. I crave it. Well, everyone's been leaking stuff out lately. There hasn't been really any solid Halo 5 info for a good maybe month, month and a half. So it's going to be good to finally get some solid Halo info coming out. And all the little teaser tweets that we've been getting from Major Nelson and Phil Spencer and the I Love Bees 2.0 coming out 
and all the craziness behind the leaks on NeoGAF and now the details of the E3 press conference. There's just a lot of things where it's a lot of wishful thinking at the moment. But once we have final details and firm details, that's going to be, I think, a lot better for Halo fans. I think once we get that information, a lot of people are going to be really happy. Yeah. I think the biggest news you will get is the Halo 2 anniversary. I mean, first the announcement and then the release date for later this year. And then maybe a gameplay trailer. Yeah. I just want to know about the multiplayer. That's it. Like, I know exactly <laughs> what Halo 2's campaign is like and what it will probably look like, you know, remastered. I just want to know how they're going to handle multiplayer. Right. Makes sense. So, until next time, guys, we will see you later.